Our second scripture lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death, hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Does Finn have a brother? Uh, cousin Liam. Cousin Liam. Hi, hi, Liam. Hi, Finn again. Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Jack and Sam and Violet and Eliana and James. James and... James, you're Matthew. Benjamin. Benjamin. Why do I not give it's my son's name? James and Benjamin. Hey, Ben. There he is, right? Okay, yeah. Sometimes I call him the name of the dog, so don't feel so bad. What? What? And Owly is here. Okay, and Alexa and, 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 and Scarlett and Finn and Liam. And my name is? Oh, thank you. Thank you for remembering that. I was just, um, my 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 grandpa. He I was the last of all the of all of his grandkids, and he would literally start from the top and go to the bottom until he found my name. Right? He'd go, "Okay, Susan, Heather, no, and go down all the name," and then he'd be like, "Robin." And I'm like, "Thank you, Grandpa." Okay. So um, it has been a busy week here at the church. We've just uh, been through Holy Week. And it started last week with, here's a hint, Palm Sunday, right? And Jesus, and the story is that Jesus came into Jerusalem, and there was a big parade, and people came out, and they shouted, Hosanna, Lord, save us. And uh, everybody was happy to see them. But that quickly turned on him, and suddenly um, he was arrested Bum, 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 right? He was arrested. He was accused of all sorts of things that, um, that he didn't do. Uh, and they, uh, he was crucified, which means he was killed on a, what's that big thing up there? On a cross, right? Yeah, I asked you because I didn't know what it was. That's exactly right. No, I was wanting to see whether you knew what it was. He was, and he was crucified on a cross, and then they put him in a tomb, which was like this. It was uh, carved out of stone, right? And they, and I don't, I can't imagine that they were like really big spaces. I think they were smaller, but it was enough to put in a body. Right, and after he died, they put his body in a tomb, and they put this big rock in front of the the opening. And three days later, on Easter, we call it Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. Hint, hint. What happened? He rose from the dead, and that's why we're here and we're celebrating that Jesus rose from the dead. Today, he's alive. We celebrate that he's alive. And then we just read in Scripture the story of Peter who was one of his best buddies, one of his students, one of his disciples, one of his followers.
It, 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 he, he's risen again? He's risen again. Yes. Um, Alexa was saying she gets it, everybody. She gets it, what today is all about. Um, Eliana. Alexa and Eliana. I'm so sick. Boy, I'm having a good morning, aren't I? Okay. Alexa and Eliana. She gets it. All right. And the other thing is it happened a long time ago. It happened like 2,000 years ago. Two th- that's a long time, right? And we're still talking about it today. Right? If it were just a story, right, we wouldn't still be talking about it. If it if 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 nothing really happened and if it was just, you know, like a good story that people would tell, they'd be like, Oh, that's a good story. But here we are two thousand years later celebrating it because people have experienced God, people have experienced new life in in their hearts and in their minds and in their lives through God in Jesus through his teachings and through his spirit. And he, uh, he rises from the dead, but he does in, in a little bit, he's going to ascend into heaven, but he's going to promise the disciples, his friends and everyone he says, but I'm going to leave my spirit with you. My, the Holy Spirit is going to be with you. And that's why we continue to, to gather and to celebrate Jesus's uh, his his birth, his life, his teachings, his death, his resurrection, because the Spirit of God convicts us, uh, convinces us that that God is, that God is alive and well, alive and well, and that God is with us, and we celebrate that today. That we that God is, and that God is with us, and that the Spirit of Jesus walks with us each and every day. We're going to say a prayer in a second, so we're going to fold our hands and, and close our eyes and bow our heads. If you did, I, but before we do that, I, if you did not get Mrs. Walsh nicely put together these little Happy Easter um, packets together, so there's if, and if you didn't get crayons or pencils in the back, you can grab one of those or go to the back and get those. And today, there's we're not having Sunday school today. We're going to stay in worship. And for all the parents, children's noise is happy noise. It means life. And so do not stress and do not worry. And I don't think there's anybody here who's going to, like, absolutely scream. Um, if they start screaming, then, yeah, you might want to head. <laughs> Go take a walk. But children's noise is happy noise. All right? Let's hold our hands, close our eyes, bow our heads, and thank God for Jesus. Dear, dear God, we are so grateful for Jesus, for uh, all that it's, it's impossible to sum up everything. But we are grateful that this day we know that, that death is not the end. It's not the end of the story, but that there is new life in you. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now you can... Our next gospel lesson, and we're hearing the resurrection story from two different gospels this morning. From the gospel of John, starting chapter 20, starting with verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb 
and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And then Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. It, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I've always thought it was hokey that the earth shook when Jesus died in the Gospel of Matthew. I, it, uh, and it shakes again when the rock is, re- is removed from the, from the tomb. I've always thought, you know, it's a little too much, a little too Hollywood. But it plays on two levels. One, in Roman and Greek culture, there is a god who controls the lightning and the thunder and the shaking of the earth. And to those adherents who would hear about this and listen to this or read this, their ears would perk up. Jesus was God. The rock split. Jesus was God. And the earthquaking also works because, my goodness, what a metaphor. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. We say that a lot, like things, he shook everything up. They were shook to their core. We are shook to the foundation. We have to rethink everything. Death, life, what is possible. Jesus is going to rock our world. Jesus makes a way out of no way. There are people here who can testify to the truth as the earliest witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. Now, who were they? Who were the earliest witnesses? So fascinating. For Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, we looked at the passion of Christ from the vantage point of the gospel writer John. But each of the gospel writers has their own tradition based on the oral stories that were handed down and about the passion narrative of his uh, entry into Jerusalem, his death, his resurrection. And today we've read two, Matthew and John. Who actually went to the tomb? Was it Mary Magdalene by herself, like we read in John? Or Mary Magdalene and Mary? And which Mary? Doesn't say. This is, this is in the Gospel of Matthew. We know it's, uh, it could be Martha's sister or Jesus' mother or another Mary. In the Gospel of Mark, it's Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. In Luke, it's Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women. And they all go to the tomb for different reasons. In Matthew, we're told that they go to see. They're not bringing ointments or tinctures or anything to anoint the body. They're going to see. Jesus had predicted his death three times, and they heard him, and they believed, and they went to see that resurrection is possible. Do we believe this? Do you believe this? Resurrection is possible. Growing up, I grew up in the church, but was taught to believe in Jesus Christ, and I did. And then as an adult, I remember thinking, Lord, I have experienced your spirit. I know that you are. But the Jesus thing, really? And I prayed about it, and God sent a sign and I truly believe and proclaim there is power in the name of Jesus. 
if you have yet to be convicted of the truth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as of God, or God, I invite you to pray. Pray to God for clarity, for assurance, for conviction that Jesus is the living God. In the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene hangs out after the other disciples return to their homes, which is another fascinating, and they return to their homes. And she makes mistakes Jesus for the gardener. When she realizes it's him, she calls him teacher. And again, that's against custom that Jesus... Uh, he would teach women and we see that he does that throughout the scripture and the first apostle is, which is a someone who is sent out on a mission is mary magdalene go and tell but it's interesting he says to her don't hold on to me so we, we have to assume that when she realizes it was him she grabbed on to him was it a you know are you real is this real am i imagining it or was it just a, sh a show of affection that embrace that many of us, all of us are looking forward to when we get there. Throughout John, we have this call to relationship with God made known in Jesus Christ. That is what salvation means to the gospel writer John, to be in relationship with God, to make our home with him, to abide with him, to cling to the vine. But here we have Jesus say, but don't, don't hold on to me. One of the commentaries that I read said this, as wonderful as Easter is, Easter Sunday, we cannot hold on to it. Easter Sunday should be celebrated with lilies and trumpets and conga. But we cannot hold on to it. Monday is coming. We need to go. Go into the community. Go into the places where people are and need to hear us say, I have seen Jesus. He is alive and resurrection is possible. And let me tell you my story. And if Mary's experience holds true, people also need to hear their name. I have shared with you and in the scripture passage we have Mary didn't recognize him until he said her name and then her eyes were opened. I have shared with you years ago that it, my first church, I was serving communion, and I said to this woman who I knew from the community, and she had not been a regular attender, attender at church, and I said to her, Betsy, the body of Christ broken for you, and I gave her the bread, and she told me later it was like uh, God saying to her, Betsy, for you. And this rekindled in her a desire to, to be a follower of Jesus Christ and to, to show up and to work for God's kingdom in the world. And that's part of her story. And I just share that because we all have the mountaintops. But later she became very active in the church and there was conflict in the church and it was really difficult and life is never easy. But she continues to meet the challenges of life with faith, knowing that God is and that God is with her. Resurrection is possible. I came across this wonderful summary written by Michael Myers Bolton of the, of the Easter message of all that we could take away from uh, Jesus being resurrected. And I want to share them with you. For those who despair that death-dealing powers have the upper hand, fear not. Easter means God ultimately is and will be victorious over the powers of death. For those who feel isolated and lonely, fear not. Easter means we are all together in the risen body of Christ, even if we're physically apart. For those who despair that our guilt is too great for God to forgive, fear not. Easter means God has cleared all accounts, liberating humanity from shame, reconciling us to God and each other as God's children. For those who despair in the midst of pain and anguish, take heart. 
you are not alone. Jesus suffers with you in solidarity and companionship. And Easter means you will rise with him. For those who despair over a world filled with hate, violence, and scapegoating, be encouraged. In Christ's passion, God has taken the place of the scapegoat in order to expose humanity's violent ways. And Easter means God one day will overcome violence. Easter means that God has taken one of the worst things in the world, the Roman cross, and remade it and remade it into one of the best, the tree of life. A sword into a plowshare. And if the worst, then also the whole creation in the end. Like the cross, the empty tomb is a great divine mystery. A rising sun dispelling shadows in multiple directions. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And now in my own words, this changes everything. Welcome the change. Make home, make your home with Jesus as you proclaim his resurrection in the world. Call people by name and work for his kingdom with all that you are, that we are with every breath until the day that we are called home. Today we celebrate God's work on our behalf. Tomorrow we claim our own. Alleluia, 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 and amen.